Today we're going to learn about posing your character. I'm a 30 year animation artist that still loves to draw and teach. One day my twin girls came to me and said, Teach us how to draw. Join Emma and Ellie and myself for Drawing, Drawing with, with Tom Bancroft and, and the Twins. twins. All right, so welcome back. Uh, it's Tom Bancroft, and this is Emma and Ellie. Hello, girls. Hello. So we're in episode four. Okay, Yay, so we made it. I know we made it. <laughs> we're doing it. Um, we've really enjoyed this, and the girls are learning. It's great to see their progress, and I hope that at home you guys are all mm -hmm. progressing along with us. And I know the girls are oftentimes going, oh, I hate that drawing. And believe me, I'm feeling the same way. Sometimes when I do these demos, the, I'm just trying to go fast and get the idea across. And so that happens. But right now we're just talking about the concepts. And really that's what I'm hoping everybody gets out of this. And I hope that's what you guys are getting out of this. It's just learning some concepts, mm -hmm. right? That are gonna make you a better artist. So today I wanna get into, okay, you've designed your own character or you have your own character, but many of us have a really hard time with not making them look stiff, right? When they're in a pose, if they're trying to do something or act or talk to somebody in your drawing, uh, or even doing something like picking up something, you know, there's a lot to do with having analyzing movement and things like that. But there are some basic concepts that we really can apply to how to get your character just to be this stiff robot into making them feel like they actually can can move and, and look natural. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna to help push posing your character. So we're gonna start with a really basic character and, uh, and then, uh, um, so, and I hope you use the basic character at home too, um, but then you can apply that to any character. So you can design your own character later on. A mermaid maybe. <laughs> it's not May. <laughs> it's not May yet. Um, so we are going to do that. So let's dig in. And before we do that, though, I do want to reintroduce you to our Wacom tablet. Um, here you go. Emma, you can hold that. Okay. So this is the Wacom <laughs> one that I'm using. Wacom is sponsoring these uh, episodes, and we're th thrilled to have them because this is a great product. And it's a great digital tablet so that I have it plugged into my laptop here. Um, so I have Photoshop running and then I can draw on this and, and have it be digitally created in Photoshop. Um, and so it's a really professional setup and this is, uh, the Wacom One is, is a, a really low cost version of that. So um, do look into that, go to wacom.com. Um, the girls though are gonna be drawing with pencil and paper just like from episode one, we talked about pencils. Yes. What kind of pencil you got there? A 2B. 2B, all right. And just a regular white eraser, I make them share it because we couldn't find another one. Because mm -hmm. I rarely erase. I just don't like to erase. It's not that I'm good, I'm just saying I don't erase much, okay? But I am good. But anyway, we can cut that out. Uh, so anyway, let's, let's get into this and enjoy uh, the process. And um, I'm gonna start with a demo. So if you guys wanna come around here and I'm gonna start drawing and teaching you how to do posing. Okay, so there's a bunch of different things that we need to know about posing. And so I'm gonna start with a really basic character. We're gonna do little crosshairs because I want them to have eyes. And so we'll just do a little circle eyes. Notice that this one is a little bit more of an oval because of course it's further away. And a little nose. And we'll just make it at the bottom of the crosshairs. The eyes hit the bottom of the crosshairs, the nose hits the top of the crosshairs, and then there's still a little smile, okay? We add some ears, and we're gonna call this guy, I think, Toby. I'll write that here, Toby. But notice his torso is like a bean shape, you know? Um, it's a little wider at the bottom, a little straighter on the back, but not pr completely straight, and a little rounder in the front. And then I'll put where his waist would be. It would be right about here, kind of low. Uh, you can put little shoulders here, uh, just circles. And then this can be just barely above a, a like a stick figure here, um, arm. And then on both sides here uh, is where I want to put those joints for my legs, okay? And again, they're about the same. They're sort of like just a sketchy tube. 
And then let's go circle uh, simple on the feet, which would be a little bit flat on the bottom and kind of round on the top. So this is basically Toby and I got I could put his hands on and, I, and I'm just going to do mittens basically. So it'll be a thumb and a mitten kind of a thing. Thumb and sort of a flat palm like a little. Okay, so that'll do. Okay, so that's Toby. And what that'll give us is just very simple shapes. And so now like, let's uh, remember Toby here, but I wanna start adding to that uh, thought process and um, start adding now some suggestions that we wanna think about. So the first thing on posing is that I want you to remember that our torso here is, uh, has where we do most of our bending, or most of our poses, the key of it is that torso shape, that bean shape. And so I want you to think about these concepts, which is, is that core, uh, torso concave or convex? And now what that means is, I think I spelled those right, is that that can bend. And so I want you to think about uh, that, uh, that as a pliable shape. And so here's like a convex, is if he were to say be sad, and now we're gonna throw those arms forward, and they're just hanging there, and we're gonna bend his legs a little bit, right? And we don't even have to see the face, but obviously he's, he's upset and sad, right? Because we've done this. And convex, think of, um, I'm sorry, concave. This would be concave. Think of that as like the back and everything caving in, okay? So that's how you can kind of remember that that's concave, all right? Now convex, it would be the opposite, right? So that's gonna be throw his back back and really bend that torso. And now he's king of the world. He's super happy um, and he is ready to take on the world. His arms are back. Uh, maybe this one is on his, on his waist here a little bit more. And his legs are back too. And he's in a superhero pose or something. But you know, that is now con convex. So concave and convex. And that really just has to do with creating this nice flow in that uh, torso. Now the next concept is, again, with the torso, is that I want you to think about is, uh, let me turn this one off, is, with Toby again, uh, that there's tilts and twists. And this is a big one that a lot of people forget, um, is that tilts and twists, I can't spell and talk, and twists, okay. So tilts and twists, now that's still using this core again. Um, and But we wanna think of that as a dimensional surface so that if say we want to get Toby to sort of stretch and reach for something and we're going to change his, his uh, expression just a tad and he's going to be you know kind of straining to get re you know reach something okay so now let's draw his his core now I want to be able to create a twist so because he was standing there hold on let me just erase this real quick Went down the wrong road for a second. See, I do a race. And so what, what he's gonna do is see, I have the chest kind of twisting here by what I'm showing. So where I'm going to uh, locate these, the hip joints is almost like the hips are pointing that way, but the chest is pointing that way. And so now I get to have him kind of that arm way out here. He's reaching for something and then he's gonna throw this arm back probably. Look how simple I'm creating this. Um, and then this, this leg might be sort of uh, bent a little bit, but this leg we're probably gonna wanna have go a little straighter because this is gonna help him with that stretch. And so having that nice little twist is, is nice because I don't have everything kind of just pointing that direction. I have some things pointing this direction and so that sets us up, and same with the head too. I could like tilt that head so slightly, which I did. And all those things make for a more interesting pose. And so you just don't want things to look mechanical, really, that's your goal. And so I'm gonna do another sketch here and another concept, which is 
and this goes with uh, uh, twists and tilts, and that's, uh, it's an Italian word, and it's called contrapposto. Contra, um, I think I spelled it right. Okay, that's a hard one. But contrapposto is a concept about, and this goes back to Michelangelo and the, and the old masters, and what they discovered is that if we're standing in place, say, uh, and here's Toby, and he's just sort of standing there uh, listening to someone, say, um, that, you know, we'll make him look kind of bored, huh? Um, that it, we don't stand, because we're not robots, we don't stand just straight up and down with our arms zombie-like, right? Um, sorry, that's my dog's. What we do is that we shift our weight. We, end it, we immediately get kind of tired and, and we want to shift our weight. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll slightly uh, tilt our, uh, our weight. And so now that I slide that that way and see now I shift my shoulder down, this one's going to hang a little bit uh, lower. This one's going to hang just a little higher. And then now I'm going to have more of a straight leg here on that leg, and this leg will probably get thrust out a little bit more forward, and I get this sort of S-curve going through the body rather than a straight line. And that's contrapposto. I mean, you see that, uh, you know, when models pose and things like that, you know, they're always like, you know, putting their arm up. Imagine this is, <laughs> this is not supposed to be Toby right now, uh, but they're kind of, you know, uh, thrusting their hips out and imagine this is a, a bathing suit um, and maybe this hip this hand is on this hip and this is a very contrapposto because of the tilt of that shoulder and the the tilt of this waist and so this leg is going to be a little bit straighter and that leg is gonna, really going to be thrust out here right and that gives you a really nice contrapposto and so when you throw that with tilts and tr uh, tilts and um, and twists, and then thinking of convex and concave, you're really starting to get a lot more movement out of uh, out of your drawings, um, and you're starting to get poses that aren't so stiff and straight up and down like my original Toby sketch right there. Um, so that's the goal: is to try and get as much life in here. And we got we remember remember that that drawing of that uh, I think it was Michelangelo did that you know of the guy and his hands here and he, he has multiple arms and he's got multiple legs and he, you know basically what it's showing is this range of motion and so we do have that where we can only go so far with uh, how far our our arms and our our legs can uh, can reach and that. What that does is you got to you got to remember that, um, and if you don't, then you're going to look. It's your characters are going to look odd, and that's really when you need to go. Okay, I need to I need to move this my core. If I'm making my arms and legs do all the work, then I'm really not considering my core. I'm not bending it, and really that's the key. Is that a lot of people don't bend their torso in their drawings because it ends up adding a little bit more, um, you know. Uh, perspective and things that get a little bit harder. But I want you to start thinking that way. Uh, another one is weight and balance. Let's consider that. Um, that things weigh and, uh, and that balance is a key issue for your characters to look like they're not going to fall over. And the easiest way to do that is that, um, and I want to introduce this new idea, which is counterbalance. So counterbalance is something that we all do, but we don't even think about it. And so what that means is if I'm gonna stand here, or Toby, Toby's standing here, and he needs to reach for something, if it's really close by, he can do this. He doesn't really even have to bend his torso very much. He'd probably bend it a little bit, but really in general, he's going to just sort of reach for it because it's just right within his grasp. Now, if he has to really reach for something, say it's way over here and he starts here, now he's going to do kind of like I did before. 
he's really going to have to lean over. This is where I'm going to do my convex kind of a torso. And now he's so far over, um, if this was where he started, that and he's reaching way over here, right? He immediately has to throw this arm out to counterbalance. Otherwise, he would fall over because remember, his weight started here. And so his legs started here too. So that leg is here. Now he's also probably going to throw this leg out. And we do this without even thinking it. But what we're doing is we're basically saying, I need to have about half my weight over here and I need half my weight over here because that center line is where I started. And so to do this kind of a position and get that kind of a flow going out that direction, uh, we have to throw some of our weight and shift it out to the other side. And that's called counterbalance. And if we're not thinking about that, um, of really supporting our weight, and really this foot might even go over just a, a little bit more, maybe like right over here. If we're not doing that, then we're going to fall over. And our characters are just not going to look right. People notice that. They don't know what's wrong with it, but they go, oh, that doesn't feel right. Uh, so those are some of the concepts that I really want us to think about. One of the last ones is, um, is silhouette. And I'm going to see if I can spell that. This is a harder one. I always spell it wrong. Uh -huh. I think I'm doing it. So silhouette. Now this one you may have heard about. The nine old men were big on this, uh, the old Disney animators. And what that means is that they wanted to make all their poses very clear. And the best example of that, at least that I can think of right now, is if Toby was, let's say he's, uh, he's I don't know, if he's facing this way, uh, going in this direction. And he's just sort of standing here and he's, he's drinking his coffee. He's talking to somebody or he's listening. This is really, really basic, sorry. Um, and maybe he's holding it too with two hands, okay. So with silhouette, what the idea is, is that this pose, while it looks okay and it reads all right and everybody probably would understand that there's a guy here, Toby, standing here holding coffee. Uh, but you, it's not as clear as it could be because the silhouette concept is, is that you want to then think of this as if it was all blacked in and that would be the silhouette, right? It'd be like sort of the paper cutout if it was black paper, the black paper cutout version of, of the pose that you just did. And this is really what it reads like. So if I, if I stood across a room and looked at this pose before it was blackened in like I just did, I would be going, ah, I'm not sure I can make that out, what he has in his hand, right? Or what he's doing exactly. So Silhouette does this, is it pushes us to recreate this pose. And I'll, and I'll give the pose maybe a little bit more interest. I'll have him slightly leaning over as if he's really, uh, really talking to somebody. And um, what I'm really gonna wanna do is, is really have this, this coffee mug out in a very clear way. I don't need to see all of what his fingers are doing and stuff, but he's holding it like this, say. Right, and then maybe I'll, I'll put this hand on his, on his uh, waist here to really clear that up. This leg, just to make it more interesting, will be a little bit straighter. And this leg could be a little bit more bent. Because again, now I'm also applying a little bit of uh, contrapposto and shifting his weight over a little bit. But now what I've done is when I, when I sh shade this in, it's the same concept, right? It's still a guy, Toby, holding, holding his coffee cup. Uh, and by the way, I'm just doing horrible drawings today, so I apologize. Um, but what... It's the same idea, okay? But can I go back to the back of a room and look at this pose now and say, yeah, I totally see what that is. That's somebody, I don't know what his expression is anymore, but I know that it's somebody that's casually holding a cup of coffee because the pose feels casual. So that's part of how I'm reading that. But also I can now see that it's, it's coffee that he has in his hand. And that's a big deal. because So that helps me to read what is going on. And so that's the heart of Silhouette, is trying to make very clear poses that can communicate uh, as clearly as possible 
And so silhouette is one of those things that helps you do that, just to consider that. Okay, girls, well, it's your turn, and I think we need to get you drawing, and I have an assignment for you. Now, Emma on the left, I want you to draw Toby, and you're gonna have him catching a balloon. So the balloon is flying off, and that's the pose I'd like to see you draw, so you can get going. And now, Ellie, you can draw Toby. Let's see, let's make him have an apple on the ground, and he's trying to pick it up. Okay. So use that little ground plane that I sketched him. All right, girls. Well, that was fun. Yeah. You guys did a great job. What a challenge. How did you like drawing Toby? Oh, Toby. <laughs> it was, it was hard, a, but it was good. He's a little cutie, right? Yeah. And you can make anything kind of come to life mm -hmm. if, you know, even basic shapes. So did you kind of learn a little bit about maybe how to get a character to look like it's coming to life? Yeah, with posing? how to twist. Yeah. Awesome. Never been good at movement, drawing movement, so that would be It's awesome. super hard. Yeah. yeah, I know. I've been studying that most of my life, but I do see that every day on Instagram with other artists that they really struggle with that. And so this, hopefully this lesson is kind of the beginning to get you on that road. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, this has been great. I don't know when we're going to do another episode. We might be a little while, but we really enjoyed doing this. And so this has been Drawing with Tom Bancroft. And the Twins! Hi y'all! If you guys enjoyed watching the four episode series, make sure you give it a like and a comment, and maybe we can do some more! Who knows?